Petra here. Hey, welcome everyone. Come on in. We're doing watercolors. We're doing boats. All of you that uh, really enjoy our boat paintings, we, we do these often, uh, boat paintings, but we do everything. We do landscapes, seascapes, uh, figures, flowers. We do everything watercolor here. Um, this painting, we're actually getting into a couple different, we're going to do two boats, a seawall, some distant shoreline over here, some distant mountains, and, uh, you know, a uh, distant shoreline over here. And it's really a simple painting. As long as you know you get that first uh, contour drawing in with your boats, you're fine. You're good to go. And then the rest of it, we're going to leave lots of white paper you can see here. Look at all that white paper. So you don't have to do a ton of painting. You can leave lots of white paper on this one. And you get that real beautiful shadowing effect with bright light with the white paper. So uh, I hope everyone's going to enjoy this. We'll just uh, take a quick look at this painting. You can work right from this here if you want. Um, of course, we always draw first, so you can also uh, pause the, t the video on the drawing portion of this painting and then draw from that, and then you can come back and paint from this uh, beginning uh, part of the video. So we'll just kind of... There we go. So that's pretty much the entire paper in the painting and uh, you know you can zoom in you can draw it smaller and paint it smaller you can zoom in and maybe focus more in on the boats it's up to you but you know you can do this too as well maybe make that like so to make it a little more uh, crowd the uh, crowd your rectangle with more subject matter versus having more uh, space around the objects, but it's up to you. But this is the painting, and I hope you'll try it and enjoy it. Come along with us. We're going to go over all the details of how to create this painting step by step, and uh, you'll enjoy it, have fun, and we'll see you in just a second. Chris Petri here. Hey, everybody. Just getting back into business here. Uh, we're going to start our painting, our drawing actually first, and then we'll get into our painting portion of our uh, tutorial here. First thing is we want to um, just, uh, we saw the finished painting at the beginning of this video, so that's, I want everyone to try to paint from the finished painting that I show in the beginning of the video, if you can, if at all possible. Uh, that means, you know, if you want to take a screen capture of that uh, painting, if you want to take a picture of it from your screen off of your TV or your iPhone or your iPad, whatever it is, try to work from the finished painting. That That's to me, the seems to be the best uh, course of action. When you're painting watercolors, you really want to get the feel for the colors, the darks, the lights, you know, the tonal values of things. So that's why I always mention if you can paint from the original painting, you're really going to have a, a better chance at getting the look you're after. So if you're watching my channel and you like my videos, you're going to actually do much better if you're trying to paint from the finished painting. And also, too, don't forget, you can actually draw. So if you want to just do your pencil sketch, do your pencil sketch from my finished pencil, pencil sketch. So when I'm done with my pencil sketch, you'll see that in the video here. When I'm done with that, you'll see it. You can hit pause, take a picture of that screen capture, um, hit pause and just draw from that uh, pencil drawing. And then you go back and you work from the finished painting. That's the best course of action, I believe. But you do it the way you want to do it. You're the artist. You make your own decisions. I'm just here to say that I want to make your journey as a watercolor artist better, more fun, more enjoyable, exciting. I want you to improve constantly, and that's why I always ask you, please subscribe. If you hit that subscribe button down below on the right-hand side there, this is everything watercolor on this channel, so everything we do here is watercolor. So every week I'm creating new watercolor paintings, I'm doing exercises, everything you can imagine. Seascapes, landscapes, cityscapes, figures, flower paintings, boat paintings, you name it. Here we're doing a boat painting, so 
all of you people that love bow paintings, and I know a lot of you do love these bow paintings, we're going to get into something you really enjoy. But if you don't really like bow paintings, no problem. Just watch, listen, pick up on what we're talking about, the techniques, the methods of watercolor, because no matter what uh, subject matter you are doing in watercolor, the same methods and techniques apply to any subject matter, whether you're painting flowers, boats, landscapes, seascapes, whatever, the same techniques apply. So it doesn't matter what I'm doing here on this paper, rest assured, if you're following along and listening and taking a couple notes here and there, does that make sense? Take a couple notes once in a while, jot down some things, you know, you're going to really benefit. So come on along here, let's do it. You've seen the finished painting the first few, you know, the first minute or two on this video. Now we're going to get into the pencil drawing. So let's get started. So the pencil drawing, we're going to do a, uh, let's kind of, let's go around our rectangle here with a pencil. I'm going around my uh, tape. So I taped off my arches rough paper. I'm using arches rough paper. It's the orange orange cover. So if you're looking for the arches paper, you just look for the orange cover on the paper. On the uh, Let's see if I have some close by. Let me take a look. Hold on a second. This is what I'm using here, the arches. I always use the best paper I can when I'm doing my YouTube videos. Always remember that. When I'm doing my practice in my fun painting at home, here in my studio, I'm just, I'm using like, uh, you know, Fabriano uh, paper, student paper. Studio, I'm using Fabriano. Studio watercolor for my practice. I use uh, Fabriano uh, paper for my finished watercolors, which is the actual uh, extra white Fabriano Artistico, which is the equivalent of Arches, which is the best of the best paint uh, watercolor paper. I like to mention what I use my products here so that you know what I'm actually working on makes a difference. And then here I'm just using a number seven or a number nine uh, mechanical pencil. So we're going to do the drawing now of these gorgeous boats. So let's use a Sharpie so you can kind of see what I'm doing here. The uh, bright sunlight's coming from here. There we go. I don't know if you can see that. Okay, bright sunlight coming from here. Let's zoom out a little bit. Okay. Bright sunlight coming from here across the scene our boats. Let's look at our, there's a, um, there's a wall over here, a, um, a sea wall. There's a sea wall here. So there's a sea wall here about Three quarter, about three quarters of the way up from the top, then about halfway or less than halfway, there's a bottom of the seawall. I'll make a little mark there, and that's all I really, you know, I, that's all I really need to know. The rest we can do. So we have the top of seawall, top of seawall here. Bottom of seawall, bottom of seawall, just put BOT point. You're making your notes on your tape around your uh, watercolor paper. I always tape off my watercolor paper all the way around my composition, my painting. Then I do my Sharpie with my 
uh, hash marks just to get some ideas of where things are going to be laying out. So here we have the top of the seawall. Here we have the bottom of the seawall. The boat's going to be over here. We can figure that out as we draw. We don't really need to get into a, a zillion hash marks. Maybe we'll say, okay, over here, that's going to be where the uh, boat is. Boat. So that's where the boat is, the first boat we're going to draw. The uh, bow of the boat, about here. And then maybe over here, about three quarters of the way over, we're going to have the bow over here, bow. For the other boat, a smaller boat over here. So there's a large boat over here, it's like a fishing boat. And then over here we have like more of a, uh, maybe like a small, um, rowboat or small motorboat over here. Have fun with this. Don't get too stressed over where everything is. You're going to want to do this free flowing. It's a boat painting. You want to get into the feeling of the boats, the water, the ocean, exciting coastal scenes. Okay, so let's start out. Let's do the Here there's a uh, there's a crane up here, and that's for the boats up top. There's a crane up there for the boats up top when they're moving around the boats and taking them off trucks and putting putting them on trailers and whatever you you know whatever you have. And then this c comes down. This goes here, and that's that wall, the seawall. And then we just do a light sketch across, pretty much level. It's coming this way. Actually, it's a little bit of an angle, so remember, check your angles with your pencil. Hold it up to your, hold your pencil up to your drawing. If you're working from uh, like a, a laptop or a phone or a TV, whatever it is, or you're outdoors and you're painting outdoors, hold your pencil up, use your pencil as a, uh, use your pencil as a tool to help you get angles. So I'm looking at my picture here and I'm saying, okay, okay, so that I'm using my pencil, I'm saying, all right, I'm bringing it down to the paper and saying, okay, that's the angle of the seawall, good. Then I hold it up to the paint, uh, to the picture I'm looking at on my cell phone and I say, okay, where's the seawall going at the bottom of the seawall? Well, it's going about this angle. So I just drop it down there. Okay, good. And we can kind of look at it here. Just a quick look. So you kind of see what it looks like a little bit. There you go. All right, so once you have that, then you look over here and you say, okay, this is the sh distant shoreline. And it goes over here like this, like that. Not a problem. Now, let me turn down the lights a little bit. So I want you to see that. Top of the seawall is up here. Okay, I'll just do a little racing here. Good. Then we have the distant coastline over here. Good. Then on top of this here, we have the distant mountain uh, range over here. So you're looking at the distant mountain range. There's some buildings over here maybe. There you go. Distant mountain range. Now we have our seawall, our distant mountain range. Now we're going to do our boats. So we said our boat was about here, the bow. Does that look correct? Uh, yeah, that looks pretty good. Let's do that. Okay, so the bow of the boat. 
looks to be about here. Curves down this way. Like that. Then some contour drawing. I'm contour drawing and I'm trying to I'm trying to uh, get the angles correct here. I'm looking at the pencil line here. Okay, up here, pencil line, good. And I'm looking over here, and I'm looking here, there. Then I hold up my pencil this way to see if I'm what my angles are this way. I'm looking, okay, the angle's about this way. Like that. Okay, and then the, over here like we have this, and then here. There we go. So we have the uh, cabin. Cabin. The windows on the cabin here. I'm contour drawing this, so that there we have it. I won't get too uh, detailed with this. Let me just get some lines on here. These are the stripes on the boat. This might be the moldings on the boat along the side of the boat, the trim. It's a blue boat here, some blue. There's some darks down here. Let me see. Here's the shadowing. So the shadowing is over here. It goes pretty far out this way. Like that. See that? The shadowing like that. So this means if the shadows are long, like here, the shadows are going really far out this way. That means the sun is low in the sky. So this is like towards the end of the day or early in the morning. Just a little tidbit of information. When you see long shadows that go far out from your subject matter. So this is our, our uh, fishing boat here. When you see the shadows going long, that means it's either early in the morning or late in the day. Uh, when you have midday sunlight, when it's directly above overhead, you'll see short shadows, small shadows. So we have long shadows here. So that means it's either early morning, late day. There we go. We have it. I digress. Okay, then we have this. Then we have another boat over here. Let's get that in. So I'm just going to take that boat and go like this. Now, this boat here, same deal. Shadow is this way, quite a bit like that. Then there might be another small boat over here. There's another shadow over there on that. And there's another shadow over there. And so there's some shadows. I'm going to go up like that and do a little bit of a uh, 
couple, I'm going to make this a sailboat. Maybe I'll change it around a little bit. You can change things around if you want. That's what I'm doing here. I'm changing around. This boat might have been a motorboat. I put a sail on it with a uh, with a mast. You can change things around. That's really uh, there. We go. Some shadowing. Shadowing over here. Shadowing there. A little couple. And I think this is all we need. Maybe there is a little bit of... There are some buildings up here. Let's capture those buildings up here. There's some buildings and then otherwise Let's make some uh, another building or two up here. Like that. Okay, so we have it. The drawing is now good. We have the two boats. We have a, like a nice fishing boat here. This is a larger boat and then a small sailboat. And uh, let's do a little bit more on the bottom of the boat here. Again, we're contour drawing. So we have the bottom of the boat. There's some white here. I'm not going to worry about the writing. There's some numbers and uh, writing on the boat, so I'm not going to worry about that. Let's keep it more simple, more maybe a touch abstract. So think of being keeping your paintings a little bit abstract occasionally. So you don't want to start doing your numbers and letters and things on the boats. That could give you a problem. Um, also, to leave out some things, I see a little couple details on here I'm not going to worry about. Just going to leave it kind of simple. We'll see how it turns out. But this is more abstract. Let's just get the main exciting colors and the main scene done. And we can always add some details later. Does that make sense? You're the artist. You have to decide what am I going to add in there to make it more exciting if there's maybe less details. Or if you're painting a painting and you have a lot of details in your scene, let's say you're looking at a photograph or you're actually on site doing like a plain air painting, you might want to leave out details. You don't want to paint everything you see. You want to draw and paint maybe minimal. Scale it back. You don't want to start adding a zillion details. You want to, you can always add details later. Leave your painting less details in the beginning. Finish it and then you bring it to the studio. And then if you think you want to add some more details, you can do that. But always remember, it's better to under finish your paintings than go overboard and start worrying about every single detail that you see when you're out in plain air painting. Let's say you set up your lawn chair and your sketchbook and you're going to paint a painting outside or you're painting from my paintings or you're painting from watercolor books or you're painting from internet pictures, whatever you're painting, please remember do less in the beginning and you can always add details in the end once your painting's completely dry and completed. The next day you come back, you know, you look at it and go, oh yeah, let me add a few things here there, and there but leave it more minimal in the beginning. Underfinish it is what I'm saying. Because many of us, and I always did this too when I started, I tried to paint in every detail and it wound up getting too confusing and didn't look so good. So leave it less details in the beginning. Maybe add in some more details in the end once you're finished if you think you need it. You might not need to. Let's see how this turns out. Let's take a break. And of course, I'm talking too much. I know some of you always say, Chris, you talk too much. No problem. I understand. I do kind of, you know, talk a lot here. But I want to get you all the information. What good is it if I come on here and I'm not giving you the information you need? You need the information. If you don't want to, you can always, you know, shut the volume down, turn the volume down on the knob there, and you can tune me out and just watch what I'm doing. But I think you need the information. Okay? All right. 
We'll be right back. And again, hey, please subscribe right down there. There's the subscribe button right down on the right side there. Hit subscribe. You got to watch me every week now. Every week I'm painting new paintings. So you want to watch what I'm doing, catch what I'm telling you, follow what I'm along, the techniques, the methods. You'll learn all these things. It's great. Even if you don't like boats, you'll still learn a lot if you watch what we're doing here and you follow the, along the way we're working with our paints, our water, what we're doing with all of our uh, methods and our techniques of watercolor because we do everything watercolor here. So if you subscribe, you're going to get everything watercolor, no matter the subject matter, flowers, boats, seascapes, landscapes, cityscapes, figures, whatever it is, you got it here, right here. Keep coming back and uh, you'll be excited. You'll have better watercolor paintings as you go because you're going to learn the information you need. Okay. All right. We'll be right back. All right, it's Chris Petrie. And you guys and gals are having a fun time here. We're doing some boats. And we're going to talk about, as we created our contour drawing, you saw we drew everything. We did a couple hash marks here and there. So we did our top of seawall. There's a seawall here. It's a concrete wall that's along the side here of the uh, coastal area. Then we did the uh, bottom of the uh, boats here. And then we had our boat here, the boat bow, the front of the boat here. So we picked up that little hash mark there. And then I said the bow of the other boat was here. It's actually a little bit over to the right. So again, if you put some hash marks down, don't feel like you have to stick with them 100%. If you got to move them around a little bit, you move them around a little bit. Don't feel, you know, stuck on your hash marks. You try to get your hash marks down first on your tape. Again, we always tape. You'll watch me here. So, so many of you that watch all the time, you know, we're always putting our tape around our paper first. We put our hash marks on our paper to lay out our design of our painting, where things are going to go approximately. And then we start drawing. And again, if you don't always land on your hash marks, that's okay. Um, doesn't always work out 100%, but at least you have a guide of where you're going to go with your subject matter. Here, we said the sunlight was coming from this direction this way across the scene. So I have our little insignia of the light. So there's a little light insignia here. Just so we know when we look up at our tape around our painting, okay, there's the light. The light's coming this way. So we know where our shadows are going this way. Shadows are going this way, off of the subject matter. So that's good. We got that down. Then we said, okay, what are we doing here as far as painting? If you watch me on a regular basis, you know I'm usually either going with a la prima or glazing technique. Here we're doing a la prima. So let's do a la prima. And when we do a la prima, we know what we're going to do is we're going to start out with darks. Start with darks. That's all you got to remember when you're doing a la prima. Start with your darks. You're an artist. You're looking at your paper once you're done drawing and you're saying, what am I going to do next? If you're doing a la prima, you start with your darks. If you were doing a uh, glazing technique, you'd start with lights and just paint the whole wash all the way down the whole painting cover the whole paper with your wash, a light wash, and then you go over with your darker washes. Here, again, we're doing a la prima, which is mostly what I paint, a la prima, although I do paint the glazing technique too as well. Sometimes I use a combination of the two, not to get confused or try to muddy up the waters here, but you'll notice that most times I do paint a la prima, which is I start with darks. So we're going to do that. Start with our darks and then we paint in the lights as we go. So let's do that. Okay. Now we're going to use a round watercolor brush and this is a uh, uh, this is a number 10 or number 8 actually. Uh, da Vinci Maestro watercolor brush. It's a um, Kalinsky Sable round brush, watercolor brush, round. 
good point on it. Let's start out with this one. See how we make out. Fresh clean water. Sorry about the noise when I tap on my water bucket. When you hear that tapping sound, you know I'm tapping water off my brush. You can also take water off your brush by tapping on some tissue. Or you can lay a sponge next to your watercolor paper. They make sponges. I sometimes use a sponge. They, got, they have sponges like this. You can set this next to your water bucket and tap your brush on that to take some water off. You can use tissue. You can use your apron. I have an apron I always wear when I paint. So I usually rinse off my brush, tap a little bit, take some water off on my apron, and then go to my paint. So let's do that. Let's start now. I'm going to rinse off my brush, take a little bit of water off the brush here, and then we're going to start with our darks. Let's do French Ultramarine Blue. Let's get some French Ultramarine Blue onto our palette. Uh, some Burnt Umber there too. We want to get some dark darks. And we'll do that. We'll just get some darks going. Then we're going to go with some some uh, Payne's Gray and Ivory Black. We're going to get some real darks there. This is some really dark darks. Look at that. Ooh. That's really dark darks. Beautiful. Look at that. Start with your darks. Okay. See that I'm just taking my hand is on the paper like this on the on the watercolor paper. We have arches, rough paper, and I'm going to rest my hand on the paper and just take my brush and just take the paper and the watercolor paint and the water and the damp brush and lots of paint, not much water. Get those darks in there like that. Then, cobalt blue, touch of water, touch of purple, touch of that black there, and just throw on some shadowing. Look at that. Oh, throw in a little bit of the uh, yellow ochre too to warm it up. Warm and, you know, warm and cool. You want to have warm and cool? everywhere in your painting. You don't want to start making your painting looking like it's uh, you're using just warm and warm in one area or cool in one area. Mix up your warm and cools all the time. So here we'll use some warm and cool, maybe a little cadmium red. Let's throw some cadmium red in here. A little bit of warm in there. Look at that. Beautiful. Then we'll go in and get some straight paint. Remember, don't add any water. Just go in and get your straight paint and use your straight paint. And we're going to do this. Straight paint. Then, as we move this way, some cerulean blue. Lighten it up a little bit. And then also, too, add some raw umber in there. Warm and cool. Even though you're going to do mostly blue, add some warm in there, some raw umber. Rinse off your brush, take a little bit of water off your brush on a tissue, and then start to lighten out here because we're going into the light. Remember, the light's coming from here. So now as we come around the boat, the boat's in shadow over here on this side. And then as we go to this side of the boat, you're going to get your light. Your light's going to start to really... Uh, strike that side of the boat and you're going to have a lighter blue. So you don't want to have a dark blue over here. You want to have a light blue. And there you go. You have some of that light blue and then you add some raw umber to it too. You want to have some light, some warm and cool. And then uh, again, we're going to do the same thing over here. Dark, dark, dark. Here. Because this is on the shadow side, remember. <clears throat> Light's coming from here. Over here it's dark and in the shade. And then as you come around the boat to this side, then you get some 
you'll get some darker, uh, some lighter lights. But this is And I'm following my picture, my photograph that I have. There we go. And again, we're thinking abstract here. Now we're going to go with some... Now, I'm going to think of going with cadmium red, but let's remember this is all wet paint now. So maybe we'll wait to do our cadmium red stripe on the boat uh, once this dries a bit. So let's let this dry and we'll take a little more. Blue, take a little more blue just to get this like so. Um, cerulean blue over here and a little bit of that raw umber. So we have a mix of warm and cool, warm and cool everywhere. We're in shadow over here on this side of the boat. And there's a little bit of light catching on the top of this here, in the on the bow of the boat. And then I notice that there's some shadow there. Then we're going to start going in. More darks. Burnt sienna, burnt umber, the blues. Cerulean blue, French ultramarine blue, just get some darks in there. The windows are, there's some darks on these windows. It's dark on the interior of the boat, inside. If you have to tap up some paint, do that. And then here you have some more blue here. Keep referring back to your photograph. Um, add some warm and cool again. Add some warm and cool here. It's light over here in this window. We're seeing the seawall over here in the uh, window. I might have to add some paint, some white paint over here to capture some of this. So if you go over a couple lights, let's say, let's say you have some trim on these windows, like some division areas here where you have like trim on the windows and you go over it with darks, no worries, you can add some white, titanium white to it later. But there is some... There's that wall over here, the sea wall. Like that, so you're going to notice that it blends in with this. Pick up some blue, get some blue in there, some gold, some raw umber. This is the seawall. Okay. A la prima. Everything one time. bit of green in there. Green down here. If you're going to add green over here in the wall, add some green in the boat. There we go. Add some blue and some of the shadow colors. Try to squint your eyes and look at the uh, at the photograph or my painting. If you're working for my painting, please look at the uh, look at my painting. Try to see where I'm. Try 
try to keep it uh, green, burnt umber, some dark, some greens. Splashes, that never hurt anything. There we go. So you have some splashes, you have bright sunlight over here. Maybe a little bit of uh, a little bit of that red alizarin crimson to make this warm looking. You can lift up a little bit of paint if you need to. If you feel you went too dark, no problem. Make a little bit of a couple darks here just so you accentuate the bottom of that seawall. There we go. A couple splashes. There you go. Okay, let's continue working on the seawall since we're working on that. Let's go right over the top. And it gets a little lighter over here. And I'm moving quickly now. I got a larger brush. So I get to move faster here with a larger brush. Tap a little paint if you need to. There's some of that same seawall color flowing into the boat, shadowing here and there. Enjoy that tie-in. You want to tie your stuff together. So here you see we're tying it in. If you can tie things together, make it seem like things are like uh, sort of blending together, you're going to have a better watercolor painting. So that's what we're doing here. We're blending in the Blending in the colors, adding some dark, some light, some warm, some cool. Um, we have some of this is drying now, so good. Let's let's get in and do some of this. We're gonna take a break in just a second. Let's do this. Ooh, let's do this cadmium red. Ooh, oh look at that. Oh, doesn't that look great? That's some exciting color you're gonna add into your painting. So that's the beautiful cadmium red stripe on your boat and that really just pops it looks great so enjoy those exciting pops of color as you go you can cool it down and make it mellow like I just did there you know you mellow it out you hit a little bit of damp brush on there you don't want to maybe have it so uh, so uh, exciting everywhere but just know that you have there you go in a couple spots perfect look at that excellent um, shadow 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 so this is all shadow over here on the top of the boat um, let's do some darks, burnt umber, French ultramarine blue, like that. Perfect, look at that. Okay, if you have a little couple splashes that get out of control, no problem, just tap them up, quick. Alright, there you go. Alright. A few more here, a few more there, we're good. All right, let's come back in just a minute or two. Um, there we go. Let's, let's take a break. We need breaks every once in a while here. There we go. We can keep working, but let's take a break. And we'll come back. And again, if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. Thumbs up if you like this painting. Um, questions, comments, leave them in the comments. And, you know, if you have a question about how I'm doing something or if you need some ideas on what you're doing and you, have, you need to have some things that you need to sort of figure out, just leave me questions. A lot of you leave great questions in my comments section. I thank you for that. 
And of course, always feel free. Keep leaving those questions, comments, how are, you know, whatever you thank you for the compliments all the time. Everyone leaves me compliments. I appreciate that very much. Everyone is so kind to me. That's why I keep painting, because everyone's so nice to me. If no one said nice things, I don't think I'd paint anymore on YouTube. Okay. All right, so I'm going to leave it as it is, take a break, and we'll come back. Let's leave a lot of white paper, too. We'll, we'll talk about that in the next uh, section as we, or the next, uh, as we come, come into the next, uh, We'll take a break and we'll come back and then we'll talk about the white paper. We want to leave lots of white paper. That's the bright light coming from this direction across. Okay. All right. We'll be right back. All right. We're getting back uh, rolling again here. Uh, I just want to let everyone know we're using Arches Rough Paper, the orange cover, 300 gram, 140 pound. Uh, so that's that's the paper we're using here. I always use the best paper I can possibly uh, purchase for my for my videos for everyone here. So just I want to let you know that I'm using the best possible paper. So I'm either using Fabriano Artistico or Arches paper when I create my paintings here on YouTube. So that you first of all I can get a great look myself. I'm trying to make my best looking paintings on here on YouTube, of course. And then also, you know, so it actually performs the best. When you use really top quality paper, your, your paintings look better. Um, it's easier to paint on your paintings, you know, on your paper when you have really good paper. So, but you can use uh, less expensive papers. I use um, Fabriano uh, student grade paper all the time uh, when I'm practicing. Um, but when I do my YouTube videos, I definitely try to I bust out my best uh, papers, you know, so it looks even better. It, you get a better look to it, and it's easier to work on, too, actually. So that's the paper I'm using right now. And uh, we're going to continue on here. And like I was saying before, I wanted to tell you, leave lots of white paper when you're doing your paintings. Uh, I'm probably going to change my water out in a second. Let me do that now, actually. So now you can look at my water. It's a little bit muddy looking. Let me change that out. So I have two buckets. I have a large bucket in my studio right next to me. I pour out my muddy looking water and then I'm always keeping fresh clean water in my bucket next to me when I'm painting. Changing it out all the time. And then here, since we are using, we're doing a larger painting, I can leave my palette the way it is and I don't have to clean it as much. If I was using a smaller format, if I was doing a smaller painting, I would have to change my, clean my palette a little more. But since we're using a larger painting, um, it's okay to leave some of my uh, paints in here w w as I go. So that's something to keep in mind when you're using when you're doing a larger painting. You can you don't have to clean your palette as much because you're really going to lose a lot of that uh, muddy looking color in the more intense colors that you're going to mix. So let's continue on here. So we have I wanted to do this. This is always a, a good thing to keep in mind. If you think you went too dark on a shadow, sometimes shadows shadows usually are darker when they're next to the object that is casting the shadow. So this boat here is casting the shadow this way, and usually your shadow gets lighter out here, less dark, and it's darker in here. So I went kind of dark, maybe a little too dark over here. So if you want to lighten up your shadow a little bit, if you go too dark over here on the uh, further areas out where the shadow is, you can add some clean fresh water and you just put it onto your shadow like that. You just add some fresh clean water like that and you just add it to your paint there and you let it sit for a second or two. Then you grab a, a fresh clean tissue or paper towel and then you lift up like that. There we go. Then you can make this a little darker. You take some French ultramarine blue. And blend. 
blend it in there. So you have darker under here and then lighter as you go out. And that looks a little better. It lightened it up just a touch. That's what we needed to do. Just a little bit. Now, uh, let's get over. We'll do this here. So we'll get over onto this side over here. French Ultramarine Blue. Burnt Umber. Dark Darks. Maybe a little bit of that friend, uh, Ultramarine Violet. Purple. And okay, this is going to be darker on this side for this uh, sailboat over here. And then you do a nice sharp line here at the bow. And this looks like it goes over here, dark like that. And it's dark over here, but it does lighten up over here on this side. So let's remember that. And as we lighten up, we're going to go with some yellow ochre. If you mix that yellow ochre with the wash you have up here, it's going to look good. There we go. Then, right away, uh, cobalt blue. A little bit of water in there, make it a little bit of a wetter wash, but you need some darks in there too, so let's not forget, let's add some French Ultramarine Blue, Burnt Umber, and then we're going to do a shadow under there, like that. And that shadow is going to go like this. Like that. Then, we go with a lighter wash, maybe some cerulean blue there with some water and we just add some cerulean blue there like that and some splashes. Then some, we have some yellow ochre and raw sienna here. And some blue over here. So a light blue over here on the bottom of the boat. Darker darks, French ultramarine blue, burnt umber. that and we're going to go with some darker darks up here this is the top of the boat so you have that white there's a white uh, trim on the top of the boat like that and then over here it goes over here so there's some white trim over here there's some cerulean blue some blue cool blue like that. Add some red. Add some of that cadmium red here and there. Let's get some warm and cool going. Okay. And this goes right up into this here. And we do a little bit of a that's all we need right there. That shadow over here on this side of the boat really it just really makes the the painting exciting and the shadow here is good too. It ties in with the bottom of the boat here. There's another boat over here. And then there's some, some warm and cool. We have uh, some uh, purple and like 
like that. There's a little bit of red. So remember, we have to come back once this dries and add some more red over here. There's a red stripe on the boat on this side. And there's some dark darks over here on this shadow, on this small little boat over here. So get some darks, French ultramarine blue, burnt umber. There we go. And then there's a couple little spots of shadows this way. You can add some uh, bits of shadow that you see. Sometimes you'll see some shadows coming out from the boat and it looks like there's a there's a uh, some rigging coming off the boat here so you can do that you can bring out some shadows and some lines here there's another <clears throat> line over here I don't know, it's a shadow a little bit and uh, a little bit of so I'm just going to take some splashes and I'm going to take my brush and just splash this way like this so there's some gold, some raw sienna I'm just going to just make some marks, marks on the paper. Just take my brush, it's, it's dry my brush, just to get some texture on there, just like this. Flow with that flow there. That looks good. We have this here. Let's get some darker darks again. Burnt Umber, French Ultramarine Blue, lots of French Ultramarine Blue, Burnt Sienna maybe too. And we make that this area here the darkest dark, right in the, the bow of the boat, the front. And then you'll see the sh shadow the darkest dark is here, the shadow, darkest dark is here in the bow of the boat, and then as you go around the sides of the boat, you'll see a little bit of a, uh, some light, reflected light. So you could take some tissue, do some reflected light over here and over there, but make sure we have lots of dark right there. Like that. And of course the sh shadow on the, on, the, on the sand here. And that's sand, so we give it some speckles. Just tap your brush like this all around. Get some speckles of sand. You're good. Now we're gonna go. We're gonna go with some blue, cobalt blue, French ultramarine blue, sap green, over here. French ultramarine blue, burnt sienna, sap green, and again we're going to do some really rich, beautiful colors over here. There's some, I see some really exciting cadmium lemon yellow over here. You want to capture that too. Some cerulean blue, lighter lights within the darks over here. There's a lot of darks over here. And you can see it's abstract. I'm just getting some shoreline in here. A 
burnt, uh, burnt umber, darker darks over here. And we're just going to go across like that. There we go. Then over here. Then you rinse off your brush and you use some lighter cerulean blue to get some of the lighter lights here because we have some lighter lights. And then we have some darker darks again. So we want to keep it. There's some darker darks up here. that. Maybe we mix it up a little bit. There we go. Like that. So it's your painting. You're the artist. You mix around your colors, have fun with it. Over here, I leave a little bit of white spots here and there, but mostly I keep the. Uh, you can add a, you can blot up a touch of paint here and there if you want to make it a little more misty looking in the distance there. Um, what else do we have here? I think that's looking good. Maybe a couple. Leave white paper, leave lots of white paper all through here. Then we're going to go over here, mix up all our darks we have. There's some buildings up here, so we, we leave those darks and lights. Cerulean blue. Darker darks over here in the shadow. There we go. Okay, we've been working for a while, and we haven't taken a break, and breaks are good, remember? Always remember, breaks are good, um, so that we don't get uh, too carried away with things. Sometimes we wind up doing too much detail, or um, we get sloppy sometimes when things are, when we're going, working too much, for too, too, uh, too much so when you're working, take breaks. All right, so now we've got a lot of good details here. There's a nice dark here. There's a uh, dark here like that. These are, uh, these might be like pilings that are along this wall, this seawall. So let's get those in there. And then on the other side, like that. And again, flow, flow down into your boat with your seawall colors so that you blend it in. That's a bit of a shadow there. That looks pretty good. Okay.
Okay. We left a lot of white paper here, that's good. We got our hills in over here, the distant shoreline over here with some darks, beautiful blues, greens. Um, you know, add in some warm colors in there, maybe some red too. Get some red in there. Let's harmonize our colors, mix our colors everywhere in the painting. And that's good. We'll come back, we'll do some sky wash, and I think we'll have everything completed. I think, you know, we don't want to go too much more. Again, leave less, you know, less is more. Finish up your painting, get it done, you know, let it dry, let it sit for a couple days, and then you can go back and do some more details. But it's better to do less and then go in and do a little more versus overdoing it and doing it, you know, just doing more and more and more and more details. So let's let's kind of say it's looking pretty good right now. We'll add a little more now to finish up and then we'll be done. But then, you know, in a couple days or so, if you want to add some more details, you can do that. But let's kind of get the idea of under finishing our paintings so that it doesn't look overworked. Okay. All right. And I'll always remember, please subscribe. Hit the subscribe button below over here on the right hand side down there, the red subscribe button. We're doing watercolors every week here on my channel. Guaranteed, we're doing watercolors, and you're going to learn a lot. Methods, techniques, we're doing everything. Boats, seascapes, landscapes, flowers, figure painting. We're doing even ink and wash. We do all kinds of watercolor techniques. Keep coming back. I uh, thank you for following along, and we have uh, people racing outside my house here. I live on a busy street here, so there's some people uh, doing burnouts on the uh, road here. Anyway, uh, everyone, come on back in just a few minutes, and we will... Finish up this painting. Okay, we're back. Everyone, we're back. We're going to finish up our painting here. I'm going to change out the water here. Let's uh, get some fresh, clean water. So we always try to keep our water fresh and clean. When it gets too muddy, we change out, get some fresh, new water in our bucket. Uh, again, we said we wanted to keep lots of white paper in this painting, so we're, we stuck to our game plan. Lots of white paper. We're not going to go overboard and start covering the whole uh, watercolor paper here with colors We're gonna, and, and washes. We're going to keep white paper here. Um, we have uh, a little bit of uh, sand color over here. Let's do that. Get some uh, sand color there and scrub it on. I'll change out my brush a little bit like that. Just scrub on some, sometimes you just scrub some stuff on like that. It looks good, you know, haphazardly. And then we, there we go, like that. Any old way, any old way, have fun, have fun. A little bit of splashing, there you go. Some sand color, that gold um, color looks great for sand speckles splashing okay there we go we have that now um we also can do some lizard and crimson for some really warm looking colors there that lizard and crimson just a touch of it just the ever so slight amount of lizard and crimson on your watercolor paper for a really light wash gives you that really warm looking sand color so we're going to do that and that looks wonderful. You can do that. You can add some even cadmium lemon yellow. That really adds some nice warmth to your painting. Cadmium lemon yellow in very little amounts. Just here and there you add a little bit of that onto the sand and that just makes it warm up. It heats it up real nice. There we go. Look at that. Just a little touch though. Don't, do, don't overdo it. There you go. If you want, you blot it up a little bit with a tissue. There you go. Now, we're really uh, at our point that we want to make sure we don't, again, overdo it. We don't want to go too much with paint and washes everywhere. Let's, let's do some sky wash over here. Let's take some cerulean blue. And we mix it in with some of that raw umber that we had over here. 
scrub it on. Straight blue and some raw umber and cerulean blue and then once you get some color on the paper then you just scale back use your uh, your tissues I'm gonna go over here my tissue papers are stuck in the bottom there okay and then just scrub this down with water just a damp brush damp brush that's all so you get a little bit of color on up here then you rinse off your brush and leave it damp a damp brush take off some water and just slowly dampen it down scrubbing it down so you're blending it down a little bit like that then maybe you add just a touch of orange maybe wipe up the palette there a little bit get some orange and you put some orange there along the horizon line up top here All the way along here. A little bit of that orange. Okay, very light orange, just a touch. Up here too. So you're going to use an orange, a super light orange wash, super light, just a touch of that light wash along the horizon line here. And then you're going to leave the white paper up here. We added a little bit of blue over here, but we, again, we said we wanted to add, leave lots of white paper. Um, let's add a little bit of that lizarine crimson up here. Just the ever so slight amount of lizarine crimson in the sky, just to warm it up. Hot summer day, hot summer day, you can see it, right? Hot summer light bright sunlight coming across the scene this way throwing shadows over here that's what we want we want that bright white paper And if I can get some lines going, some, some lines, I guess. I, I try to add a little bit of the lines of some washes, some just some very light wash, just to get some lines flowing so that it's all the lights coming from here, the shadows are flowing this way. If you can get some extra bit of lines in your washes like this. It almost makes it look like there's more light coming across the scene like this, like that. All right, good. So I think that's about it. The only thing we have left is we're going to let this dry 100% and we'll come back and we'll add in some more details on the mast of this boat. There's a couple details up here. Um, on the top of this uh, seawall, there's a couple buildings over here with some cranes, and I want to add a couple details there. But you can see we're pretty much good. We'll also add a couple details of white paint here to um, add a little more detail to this window on the front of this boat. But I think other than that, everything is looking pretty good. I might want to add some white down here too. I think I lost a couple areas of light that I wanted to uh, make sure I capture. So let's come back and also too, let's draw in. There's a small there and then there's also a couple uh, details we could add there too. There we go. 
All right, we'll be right back. We'll let this dry 100% and we'll finish up our details. Okay, we're finishing up our boats here. And uh, wonderful scene. Fun painting. We're gonna add some final details and then we're, we're gonna actually uh, call it complete. So we said we were going to add some bits of color. Let's add this. Okay, that's a bit of color there. And then there's also And then we're going to go with uh, maybe a blue up here. Start off with a triangle. Then once we get the triangle in there, then we just do a little quick like that. Then we use some grayish colors here. No big deal. Let's just add some. And then I do uh, hit and miss, paint a little bit, leave a, a space, paint a little bit. And then uh, over here, same thing. We have some details over here. That doesn't look too good. Still the paper's a little wet up here. I'm gonna leave that go. Maybe I'll just add a little pencil line up here, like that. That's good enough. Over here, I think I smudged some paint over here and some eraser. I was erasing or something happened over here. I don't know what that was, but I'm not going to worry about it. I'm just going to French Ultramarine Blue and Burnt Umber to make it dark. Take some of that off the brush first and then some blue that's a bit of a crane over here some sort of crane lifting uh, equipment so we leave that over here when in doubt splash out a little bit okay that's good and then uh, a little more good there and that's pretty much all the details we need um, what else did we say we wanted to do we wanted to actually uh, use some of our titanium white with a little bit of yellow ochre so we just take some yellow ochre and titanium white mix it around in the top of the tube of paint so we get a nice uh, warm white and then we're going to do a touch of highlights there on this top of this boat because we lost a little bit of that. And so when we lose a little bit of our lights, you can add a little bit of that white like we just did. And there's some more over here. like that and you can add some dark a little bit of a shadow line or something here and there just to there's some darks over here 
French ultramarine blue, burnt umber. Over here in the boat. So I try to capture those darks in the boat, in the back of the, uh, st the stern area of the uh, boat. Looks pretty good. I see a little bit of that warm. A little bit of that alizarin crimson here on the side. So I just add a tiny bit of alizarin crimson there on the side of the boat. And again, titanium white if you have to cap, uh, just to uh, get some highlights. I think that looks good. Warm and cool. There's a little bit of a There seems to be very little light on that, so we'll soften that uh, out a little bit, make it a little bit more shadow there. And there's some more shadow over here too. Like that. There we go. And some more. A little bit of light alizarin crimson over here. So as I look at it, I notice that the the bright light whites are not so much across here and again we don't want to go too much with details just try to get what you think is going to be um, try to think of it as uh, what's going to like we don't want to do too much so we're just going to do A couple there, a couple rigging lines on the uh, boat. Like that, that's good enough there. And I think we have a finished painting. So this looks fine. Always remember, less is more. Um, you know, you can add a couple more details to the uh, top of the boat here. There might be a, a couple. Uh, Details on the top of the boat that we didn't have. Maybe an antenna on top of the boat. Maybe there's another uh, antenna here. Like that. So you can add a little bit of pencil marks just to add in a few things. This looks pretty good. A couple of lines across here I see.
sometimes adding a little bit of that light if you splash a little bit of white on the uh, paper a little bit of that titanium white you splash it on it it looks like little bits of light maybe gives a little bit of a texture just a few spots though you don't want to do too much there we go and it'll it'll actually mellow out and kind of disappear a little bit but it'll add a little bit of the sparkle to the painting with a little bit of those white highlights with some splashing of the titanium white all right I hope we had fun here again please subscribe if you haven't subscribed we do beautiful watercolors like this every week uh, the subscribe button is just down below here on the right hand side if you hit the subscribe button and the notification bell you'll be notified each week when we create a new painting we're always creating new paintings every week here on my channel we do everything watercolor so if you're a watercolor artist you're in business you're here every week you're learning new techniques new methods uh, all the details of watercolor are covered here every week we go over everything we always make sure we're giving you all the details on paints washes techniques methods um, layout drawing skills painting skills how to paint different methods of painting we're doing a la prima painting we're doing uh, the um, uh, you know just doing regular uh, glazing techniques which is just ba basically painting over the whole paper and then going over with a light wash first and then darker washes over on the second wash or third wash with the darker colors the darker tones tonal values here we did a la prima we painted the darks first so you learn all about the techniques and methods of watercolor here keep coming back enjoy thanks so much for coming by i really appreciate your comments um, leave comments if you have questions and again um, we're here every week for you so uh, enjoy lots more videos to come and uh, again enjoy we have different videos coming up too we do boats we do flowers we do uh seascapes landscapes flowers still life we cover everything watercolor and let's just take this tape off here and see if we can get a little bit of a closer look at the uh, painting